If you're just joining us, we're live in Sunnyvale, California at the 2019 Android Dev Summit, and this is Hashtag Ask Android. Okay, so joining us right now are Vineet Modi and Trevor McGuire, uh, who's, who are going to be fielding questions about Camera X. Uh, Vineet is the product manager for Camera X, and Trevor is part of the Camera X engineering team. All right. All right. So Kalahandi M asks, uh, so when will you release a stable version of a Camera X API? <laughs> Everyone so, wants to know this. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty excited to share that, like, uh, Camera X will be beta uh, end of this year, mm -hmm. and then with the beta release, developers will be able to use Camera X in production. That's cool. great. Yeah, that's uh, a good thing to point <laughs> yes, out because sometimes yeah. with uh, you know beta versus stable, there's questions about that. But, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, any anything you can point to that could uh, you know uh, encourage uh, developers to use in production, or I guess like some yeah, evidence of I that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, so as you said, the milestone is is can be fluid. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons that we declared um, uh, beta is is to be ready for production is actually the amount of testing that we do. Okay. So uh, one of the things is we have a device lab mm -hmm. with 52 devices. They represent 200 million uh, active devices in the market. And so everything from taking a picture, uh, rotation, et cetera, is all tested real time on those devices. Mm -hmm. In addition, we test across hundreds more devices uh, for things like just stability, crash testing, all that sort of stuff. Awesome. So yeah, the test lab is really cool. It's like if you ever see, if you ever get a chance to see it, it's amazing. Um, okay, um, let's see. What else we want? you're going to ask the next next question? Sure. Actually, I will, I will yeah. ask the next question. <laughs> Sorry. So I think uh, a question that might be on everybody's mind is: they're you know on camera one. Um, should they be migrating to camera two? Should they be migrating to camera X? Um, what are the things that you should be thinking about when you make this decision? So I think if you're using camera one today, then camera X is going to be uh, much easier for you to use because. Yeah. It's not quite as steep a learning curve as camera two is. Um, if you want your app to be like a more fully featured camera app, like you want to make use of a lot of camera controls like you, get, you would expect in like a, a DSLR or something like that. Camera mm -hmm. two is the more flexible API that's going to give you that, that control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, in addition, one thing is if you have users that are in API 20 or before, mm -hmm. API 19 or before, right, then they should uh, keep on camera one. Uh, for the majority of the users, uh, then you can move to Camera X. So Camera X will work for 90% of devices that are in market today. Awesome. Excellent. All right. So let's see. Um, so one, a question from Pranay Patel asks, is there any inbuilt way that Camera X have or will have for developers to easily switch camera from front to back and vice versa? Yeah. So today, you can actually do this. Uh, with um, use cases, you configure them with a specific camera in mind. So you say, I want to use the back camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you bind it to a life cycle. Now, life cycles don't always line up with when you want to switch cameras. So mm -hmm. you, know, you might be in the same activity, and you want to use the, back, or the front camera from the back camera. And so what you can do is you can actually unbind the use cases from uh, that life cycle, and then bind new use, use cases with the front camera um, as the configured camera. So that'll, that'll help you switch cameras easier than you could do with camera two or camera one. Um, in addition to that, we also do have the camera view module. Uh, this is something that you can include into your build.gradle file. And it, it provides a drop-in view called camera view, which would allow you to show a preview on screen easily and take pictures uh, and save those to disk. Um, and that has an API where you just set which direction you want uh, the, which camera direction you want to be shown in the preview and for the pictures. And so it's a simple API, set lens facing. Um, cool. That's what I've always wanted, just a <laughs> drop-in view so I can put my camera in. <laughs> so, right. uh, yeah, we got a lot of questions from developers. Um, Rahul Raj and uh, Hussein Khan both uh, were asking about this. So basically the intersection between Camera X and uh, MLKit or sort of other machine learning stuff. So what is, uh, I guess, the plan yeah. re involving MLKit and Camera X? Absolutely. So uh, we're super excited for this. So mm -hmm. in general, you know, a lot of developers are asking for this. Mm -hmm. And what we want is Camera X to be a seamless stack where uh, we take care of all the hard stuff of configuring the camera. Uh, and then at that point, it's easily uh, able to slot uh, things like ML plug can and play, plug yeah. and play on top. Uh, that's now uh, coming more into next year. Uh, but we are building up towards that, so I think that'll be a super exciting direction for developers. Awesome. So one of the questions that Rahul Raj asked um, was, we are experimenting with Android Camera X and machine learning, and our TensorFlow Lite model needs a 3D array of RGB values, but the Camera X analyzer returns YUV. Is there an easy way to do that, to get, a, to get an array to RGB? Uh, so 
<laughs> not as easy as it could be, but uh, mm -hmm. using uh, the image analysis use case, you can get YUV images. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there are ways that you can convert that to a uh, RGB image. And you can mm -hmm. use the YUV image class to actually encode that image and then decode with bitmap factory mm -hmm. to get, get an RGB bitmap. Uh, or um, if you're a more advanced user, you can actually use RenderScript. There's a script say, intrinsic to I say RenderScript would have been my thought, yeah, yes, on that one. Yeah, yes. It'll be fast. That's, that's, yes. a, that's, that's the important thing on that one. Um, cool. Okay, so from Twitter, uh, Tel, Telvik K, Telvik, <laughs> um, asks, uh, basically, can we use a Camera X without Jetpack? And I'm interpreting that as like without the other uh, Jetpack libraries. Or, like, can or, it be or, or without migrating to Android X? I'm not sure. But... Or without migrating to Android. Yeah, X, sure. I mean, I, I think Android X is is and Jetpack are like core components for yeah. Camera X. I mm -hmm. think some of the things is like there's the lifecycle uh, management, mm -hmm. right? So we rely on Android X for that. Okay. It's so it's really tightly coupled with it. Uh, so I think our recommendation to developers is to really uh, consider migrating to Android X uh, as part of Camera X. Okay, so you, you migrate to Android X. Uh, do you need to be using like view model and live data, or are those uh, separated <laughs> yeah. from that? So uh, no. Um, okay. We we do want to uh, expose some of these new features that or these new sort of programming paradigms in yeah. Camera X if we can. But um, you will need to use life cycles right now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, live data is something that's optionally going to be available as well. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's like very compatible with yes. you know, kind yeah. of this latest and greatest stuff, uh, but you can yes. use it without it. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. So Magic Dex from the YouTube yeah. live stream was asking um, how or if Camera X is going to handle multiple camera streams at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think today uh, a majority of the the use cases require just one camera, one one camera being active at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are kind of overall on the platform. <laughs> uh, we are exploring how do we uh, enable kind of uh, multiple camera streams, mm -hmm. uh, especially for front and back. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, though, there we starting with Android P, mm -hmm. uh, we have a new API called the Logical Camera API. Yeah. Uh, that logical camera API, what it does is it combines um, all the physical cameras into one easy API mm -hmm. for developers to kind of access all the different physical sub cameras. Camera X will be able to work with all these, all the all the framework APIs that, that are existing. I, I presume that's supported on Pixel too, like with the two rear cameras. Like, is that? Uh, yes. So the Pixel is using a, a logical camera um, mm -hmm. API for both the front and the back. Oh, great. Excellent. Cool. Okay, so we talked about uh, front and back. Uh, we have uh, Cyprian uh, asking, is the uh, handling of screen rotation uh, fixed, fixed in Camera X? <laughs> uh, maybe I could phrase that a little bit different, but basically it's, it's screen rotation could be easy uh, in yes. Camera X. Yes. Yes. yes, so screen rotation is a, is a very hard problem because you know, developers have to worry about what, what's the orientation of the sensor yeah. on their yeah. phone, what's the natural orientation of the device, um, and like, what's the current display orientation. So. Uh, we have a sample Camera X Basic that they can take a look at, which uh, does show how to use it with Camera X. Mm -hmm. And we have a few new things coming up soon, so keep an okay. eye out. I think uh, calling out the sample is great because we're actually almost up. Is there anything else uh, for getting started with Camera X that uh, developers should know or go to? Uh, th so there's the Camera X uh, website uh, on, mm -hmm. on developer.android.com, and I think that's the best way to get started with Camera X. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, Trevor, Vinny, thank you so much. Um, if you want to learn more about Camera X, of course, we also, in addition to the website, we have the Camera X Code Lab. And, uh, and again, we'll be back soon. So uh, thank you very much.